If you use Kakos Reaper and want to record while using plugins so that you don't have to mix with those plugins later down the line, watch this video. So before I get started on the tutorial, I want to warn everybody that number one, I do not recommend doing things this way because there's no legitimate advantage. Like, you know, if you used hardware while recording, I find an advantage there because it frees up the hardware. It might sound a little bit better because the audio is still in the analog domain before you convert it to digital for the first time. So there's advantages to recording with hardware. However, for me at least, there's no reason to record with software other than if you are very, very tight on RAM or CPU or you want, you need a, like a quick turnaround, like th those are the advantages, okay? But the problem with baking in effects is that you can't reverse them afterwards. Now, there is one actually thing that you could do that's not the same. So... And I'm going to show you in the tutorial, you could technically record the same track, I think. I've never tried to do it before, but I'm going to try it today. You could record one track, the same input, with no effects, and then the same input with effects while recording. So, and the reason I say there's no advantages is latency issues, which I'll get into right now. All right, so I'm going to show you my control panel software first. Now, depending on your audio interface, yours will look different unless you're using an audio interface. And in that case, it will be the same or it might look like the newer style. Oh. But either way, let me go back to classic style because I like it better. There is something called latency and... You set that with the ASIO buffer size and basically the higher the buffer, so the larger the numbers, the bigger the delay. And, well, that's a problem because you don't want delay when you're recording audio. So to minimize the delay, you don't record with plugins. But if you do want to record with plugins, here's how you do it. First of all, you can either press record arm and then go down here for where your inputs are now if I were to switch this to the right one this is what I'm recording with right now and I can monitor this as well but for right now I'll keep it off and right click either on where it says record armed the red button or on the input itself and you go down to here where it says track input FX chain. Now, what I would personally do is temporarily disable record arm, add all the plugins that you want to use. So we'll do this one because here's the important thing down here, you see how it says CPU 0 slash 0 SPLS? That's short for samples. So it's zero samples, but just because of the audio interface, there's going to be delay regardless. Now, the best audio interface out there with the lowest amount of what's called round trip latency, or RTL is the acronym, you have the RME audio interfaces, their PCIe interfaces are the best, or their USB interfaces aren't too bad either. Also, Motu has affordable interfaces that were just released last year or earlier this year, the M2 and the M4. They'll probably be releasing other ones as well sometime down the line that have very low latency as well. So those might be able to be used while recording, even vocals, maybe. Also, Slate Digital has their interface. That audio interface is also very, very good. But anyway, you set your plugins up and check out their latency figures. Like here's another one from Cakewalk that has zero samples. If I were to use the one from IK Multimedia, you see that, yes, it does have a little bit of delay, which may not entirely be a bad thing. 
You know, you may actually be able to get away with even using Acoustica audio plugins, which let me show you some of those. Yeah, now all of a sudden we have a lot of delay. Now the problem with that is you're going to have to up your buffer size to compensate. Otherwise, you're going to get audio glitches happening during your audio, which is actually why I recommend not even doing this to begin with. But since some people out there might want to know, how do I record with plugins? But the other suggestion that I would say is if you're going to do it this way, you should still record a raw track. And the way you do that is, so I'm showing you input two. As you can see, it's going through the plugin. But then we set up another track, enable it, change it to the right input or whatever yours would be. So now we have two tracks going at the same time. One of them has no effects on it at all. The other one has all these plugins. And you can see, check, 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 check. See? And then I would, of course, be adjusting these as well. But the idea is that this simulates what you would have if you were recording with hardware except you're not using hardware you're using software and it's being what we call baked in or printed to plugins and for those curious this would be an api 560 equalizer this would be a universal audio la2a or teletronics if it's the vintage version and then finally we have a manly labs Massive passive equalizer, but I would highly recommend you record raw, unprocessed tracks if you're going to go with this method, just so you have a backup. But again, I can't stress enough, I don't recommend recording with plugins. There's no good advantage to doing it other than saving on RAM and CPU down the line. There are a lot of disadvantages to doing this, but the choice is yours and yours alone. Good luck out there. And if you learned something from this video, then give this video a thumbs up.